Hey everybody, hope you can hear me and see me alright. Uh, I gather there were some problems at the beginning. I hope there isn't any now, but uh, do let me know if you can hear me and see me. Um, hope you're all having a great day today. I've got Kali with me. Hi Kali. Hello. How are you doing? Pretty good. Um, just posted up uh, a certain hacker's hand on Twitter. Ooh. That sounds ominous. <laughs> Very <laughs> I will ominous. Share it in chat. Good, good. Not sure if disappointed or not. Disappointed that you can see me. Yeah, I know. I'm not much to look at. <laughs> yeah, um so today's stream might be a little bit shorter than normal. Might uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow in regards to the new house, and I'm also very tired because I spent the majority of the weekend being very busy. But um, yeah, we're going to try and get through some stuff today. Uh, today will be so I was just in the mood to do kind of like a first pass at all the weapons and things like that that we have. Um, oh, if anybody was wondering the music at the beginning, that was that was from uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga. I don't know if you heard I the news. I linked it in chat. Oh, cool. Because Panzer Dragoon 1 and 2 are getting a remake um, and it's going to be out next year and that's extremely exciting. Uh, I did not plan the music for that announcement. I actually planned the music ahead of that and then Sega, I, I think maybe yesterday said oh we're going to be doing the remake and that's quite cool because I've got the first one I've got the second one and I have the much sought after third one and they are all really 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 amazing games especially the third one um, which I hope will get a re-release at some point as well but uh, yeah enough of that um, so, I was hoping that Steve would be with me, because I was going to ping some ideas off him, but I think he might be a bit busy at the moment, so um, I'm just going to have to kind of go in this alone. He'll join in a few minutes, I believe. Ah, okay. Um, so, I want to give you guys a rundown on what's going to happen, so... Again, I'll, I'll kind of give this blanket warning out right now. If you are afraid of possible spoilers for the final game, now's your time to leave, because we'll possibly be discussing what will change, what will may, may be cut, um, and what the, what the weapons will do, that kind of thing. So if you're kind of concerned about that, Exit door that way, I don't know. Next button's appear somewhere. I can't point. It's up there. Yeah. So, uh, alright. On with... Uh, spoil me. <laughs> yeah, on with the show. So, yeah, I'm doing a rough pass. First pass. Um, uh, deciding what weapons will be staying. What will be cut. And what will be kind of combined into um, other weapons. So... Um, my initial first document is on the left here. Uh, I kind of went through, I took a very, very, very realistic look at all the weapons that are in the game and I kind of made a decision on what to cut based purely on the usefulness of those weapons. Um, so, for example, the uh, stun gun, um, this one here, that will most likely not be not be cut to sp so to speak. It'll be um, probably merged into another weapon. Uh, what I'm thinking is, uh, it could be uh, something that we combine into the um, spark beam. So the spark beam could have. Um, uh, an alternate fire mode where it will fire out because in, in the law a spark beam is a personal defense weapon so it would make sense for it to have a stun setting if it was a defense weapon um, that's likely what I'm thinking of because that would combine the functionality of the stun gun so the stun gun isn't getting cut 
it's just integrated into another gun that is, you know, more useful. I mean, you, yeah, it's just more useful in in my opinion. I mean, um, so that that's that's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, I have, um, yeah, I made a start. I was in the middle of kind of just formatting this document a little bit. Um, the weapons that I'm definitely not um, thinking of cutting in any way are these ones listed here. Um, we, it kind of goes without saying that cutting the laser rapier would be sacrilege. Um, so that's not going to happen. Um, but there's a very good chance that the um, assault rifle, sorry, the uh, scorpion will kind of get a knock on the head because there is no real need for it. Um, what we can do instead of having... Cause, so the scorpion and the Mark III assault rifle, they're both the same rifle just one is automatic and one is manual um, it makes perfect sense to um, take the Mark III and give it an alternate fire mode so you can fire one shot at a time or you can fire in a burst like automatically like how the um, a, bit, a bit like the assault rifle in System Shock 2 um, so you don't lose the functionality of the Scorpion because you'll have an automatic weapon you'll have the Mark III assault rifle they're just kind of combined into one um, so that's what I'm thinking um, I am going to start making a note of all these things actually because they've been floating around in my head for a while but um, I haven't actually had time to put them down on uh, virtual paper yet because, I don't know if you guys heard, but we announced um, Blood on Friday, was it? Yeah, Friday. And uh, the response has been overwhelming. Um, there, was a, there was a whole lead up to that. I was involved in a fair few things. Uh, not so much Wednesday, a little bit of Wednesday, a lot of Thursday and a lot of Friday. So... Oh, it's so busy, so busy. And it's nearly 2019 already, and I'm just looking back and going, where has the year gone? It's absolutely crazy. So, yeah. Um, lead pipe, I'm not going to cut that. Obviously, it's the lead pipe. You need some kind of mealy thing to swing and hit things with. No point in changing it to a wrench or anything. That's just... Meh. Might as well keep that big bulky lead pipe. Um, maybe, um, maybe keep, so when, when you do get the lead pipe, um, it is, uh, virtually in the room next door you're given a gun, um, which is, meh, but it makes you wonder why they kind of give you a lead pipe, you maybe deal with three enemies with the lead pipe and then you can literally never use it again. Um, so I would like to <coughs> maybe keep the lead pipe around for a bit longer. It's, um, <coughs> excuse me, why I've also kind of, I'm kind of thinking to knock the dart pistol on the head uh, and replace it with a mini pistol that's found somewhere else in the level. The dart pistol is fine. I mean, it's got it, it, it's got ex explosive tipped needles, and sometime and, and you can swap that ammo out for tranquilized darts. But uh, I'm not sure um, how useful that could possibly be in an environment. Because I mean, if if you want if you wanted to deal with the enemies, you're kind of wanting to get rid of the enemy, not. Um, maybe not so much pacify it. Uh, that would be something that the spark beam would do anyway. Um, so, again, all these things that I need to think about are um, kind of a work in progress. Um, yeah, um, 
I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, signing, signing. I'm sorry, I'm going to call you that. Uh, yeah, the alternate ammo stuff won't disappear. Um, some of it may be, may be consolidated, because um, um, using ammo uh, in different guns. Sorry, yeah, using sorry, using the same ammo in different guns. Um, it's kind of how System Shot 2 works. If you think about it, you'll never, you never have an ammo type that is completely useless because not only does the pistol use the ordinary bullets, but so does the uh, the, the assault rifle. So even when you're ready to, you know, you, you throw your pistol away and you can use the assault rifle, you don't have to then go, oh, well, I've, I can't use this assault rifle, I've got no bullets for it now. Uh, so, um, yeah, um, I'm, j I'm just trying to make, because there are a lot of weapons in System Shock, and just, uh, and I haven't even gone over the grenade types yet, so, yeah. It appears that the stream is a little bit laggy, I don't know, um, what could be causing it, but just so you're... Oh. Um, hang on. Yeah, oh, blimey, according to this, I am dropping frames. I'm not sure why. Uh, hang on. Sorry, guys, one sec, just checking what's going on. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, sorry about that. I don't know what's causing it. I will look forward to getting into my new house where the internet is a lot better. Um, fiber broadband. Oh, yes, <laughs> it will be good. Stream 4K with no problems. That'd be nice. Um, sorry, I'm going to try and read upon your comment. What's this list about? Um, well, the, the list on the left is the first kind of decision document that I made, like what weapons are we going to keep versus what we may cut, and I'm kind of doing a first draft now of what um, is going to get, because a lot of weapons can be combined, so we're going to do that. So we can actually start off with the spark beam, it's a good example. Um, I'm just going to do rough notes for now, and then I'm going to expand on it later off stream, so... Um, Oop, spark Bean. No, Beam. Spark Beam is a self-defense weapon issued, I believe it's issued by Triptum. This weapon can change in a few ways, combining yeah, this is one of my really terrible spelling. It's, it's when you're being watched, you know that thing. I can type so many words, and then when you're being watched, the pressure is just. Ugh, I can't spell <laughs> anymore. Combining. Um, gore. Sorry. Gore wants to know. Uh, does this mean that you're getting rid of some of the original weapons? Um, getting rid of a few. Possibly yes. Um, but I really want to combine them as much as I can so that the functionality is there for people who want it and we don't lose anything because we kind of need to combine things um, and we need to we need to get rid of the chaff a little just a little bit um, I the, I don't see the riot gun potentially being of any use whatsoever in, in inside an environment that's so hostile. Um, you can well, trust Daniel on everything he says because he is the genius of System Shock, right? You know everything. So you know. You're fine. Uh, you're good. That, that is flattery. We all trust flattery. you. Flattery will get you everywhere. Um, yeah, I, I'm not just kind of chopping things off without thinking about it. Uh, I really want to, you know, think about this and 
make think make things sensible where I can. And if something there's no point in making something that just doesn't have any use because that isn't that isn't an efficient use of time if it's just there and it doesn't do anything pe pe people will just get kind of confused you know this is obviously here for a reason what does it do and it doesn't do anything it's like the riot gun the riot gun it could be used for physics manipulation but i'm then thinking what kind of physics manipulation things do we have in at the moment versus what we have planned is it going to be any fun to use if the player, if somebody who doesn't know System Shock, they'd pick up that gun and go, oh, "It's a, what does it, what does it do? Does it?" And then they might start shooting things, and oh well, this doesn't do anything, um, especially in, a, in an environment that's so hostile. So I just need to think about it. This is a first draft; it's nowhere near the final thing yet. Revisions can um, most likely will be made. Um, I think that always the most important question too is, is this fun? Was this mm. fun? Will it be fun? Yes. Is it fun? Um, is it? Yeah. Is it just satisfying to use? Does it have a purpose? If it doesn't have a purpose, why is it there? Um, you know, laser focusing that down is what I'd like to do. Um, Without annoying too many people, and I won't be able to please everybody with this, but I'm going to try my hardest to make everybody as happy as I can, or close to everybody. So, right, let's go on with this then. Now, weapon can ch this weapon can change in a few ways, combining. What did I say? The spark beam would combining, yeah, combining the stun gun into the original spark beam model. So my initial thoughts for the spark beam were if you were to um, this is just an example maybe tap the mouse button sort of lightly you get a beam that shoots out it's not going to do too much damage um, but if you wanted a more powerful shot you would hold down the mouse button you would see the gun charge up um, there would be an indicator on the gun saying how, you know, how far you are away from a full charge. Um, that could be your power shot. If there's a there's a kind of risk reward thing there. That's like, oh, I need, I really need to charge this weapon up, but I could risk being attacked, and I have to kind of think about my environment a little bit. Um, as for there may maybe an overload feature. Um, I know the original gun had one. It um, we're def we're definitely wanting to keep the your gun is too hot to use because that's a thing um, that kind of makes sense in energy weapons. Really, if the gun gets hot. Um, uh, Sir Kane's asking, has AI slash navigation been worked on? It is um we had um i'm not sure if this is in the kickstarter video but our programmer recently showed a video of one of the uh, mutants actually walking around now they have uh, navigation working um so that's cool to see um so step step in the right direction for sure um right gun is great unless you hit the wall in front of you This doesn't seem to damage, yeah. Yeah, it's it's that thing of, um, yeah, it will the player understand this? You definitely have to kind of describe it to them. Um, yeah, it could be an optional gun. Um, we'll 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 see. Um, so uh, what did I say? Oh yeah. Um, Tapping, I'm just going to use PC terminology for now. Uh, tapping the, tapping the fire mouse button would emit a quick, but ultimately very weak blast from the gun. 
the player can hold down the mouse button to charge the weapon with a with an indicator either on the heads up display or the gun or both telling the player how much they have charged up the, the soon to be fired shot uh, I will put <coughs> in brackets overheat mode what I'm think what I'm thinking is oh yeah I just had an idea so you could you could hold it down and then it gets to um, so just imagine this there's kind of like a green to red bar going up um, like this um, imagine greens down here reds up here the longer you hold it down the more you kind of see a charge go up um, I guess maybe when you get to full charge the display might the, the whole display might flash red to indicate that um, you're about to overshoot the weapon which would overheat it and if you hold it for too long the weapon would just kind of it's kind of like that gun in um, this is going to be s sacrilege to say but um, there was that gun that pistol in Halo um, if you yeah I said Halo if you I think if you held it down for too long it would overheat um, and kind of you'd see the Master Chief go hey this is hot um, it might have been that green pistol. Maybe it didn't overheat. Maybe I'm thinking it wrong. I haven't played Halo that much. Um, that's what I'm currently thinking of at the moment. Have you thought about limiting the amount of times revival stations can be used? Um, maybe. Um, I know... The, the one concern I do have about that is once the player realises... It's like that thing in Bioshock where once the player figures out that the, that that can be abused um, the game doesn't become challenging anymore because you can just run up to whatever you want whack it on the head with a wrench you get punched you just revive you get up again with no n no um, no penalty to yourself you just except for the walk back um, and you can just carry on whacking things with a wrench forever and kind of the scare factor kind of disappears a little bit. So that is something I personally would want to avoid. So maybe having maybe having um, the station have a, an infinite, uh, sorry not infinite, a finite number of uses might be something we look into, might be interesting. Um, Bioshock did make revival cost money, did it? Oh, um... I I don't remember that. It's been a while since I played that. Um, sorry, yeah, let's carry on with this. Indicator. <coughs> um, the alt fire mode. Let's just say alt mouse button would fire a slow moving circular oh my goodness circular projectile that when making contact with an enemy will stun that enemy for a varying duration depending on depending on well I guess what tier they are in strength I suppose I mean you you wouldn't expect a stun a spark beam stun gun to uh, do much uh, damage to a 
do much stun time, sorry, I should say, to a elite cyborg over a uh, humanoid mutant, so... Yeah, be, be, you, you would um, probably pick up another um, energy weapon that could do that anyway. Yeah, that's true. It could be a difficulty thing. Oh, by the way, I will say, just for the record, that any any ideas, advice, or uh, anything that you give me, you are giving to me... Um, Pro with, bono. With, yeah, with full permission to use. It might get used, but I'm saying that by, by giving me ideas, you are effectively waiving any compensational rights that Night Dive might owe you in regards to your idea. So just uh just a heads up guys. I've I've said that in streams before and I'll say it again because I don't want to be sued. Nobody wants to be sued. Um start having full disclaimers at the beginning of every stream. Mm, yeah, maybe we should just start at that at the beginning. Whoops. Okay, maybe it could be a difficulty setting thing. Yeah. Um I would like I would like to see um an Iron Man kind of mode where you can't use the chambers at all. You die. <laughs> You're dead. That's it. Game over. Um, do, 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 do. I would like to opt to call it people die when they are killed. Mode. People die when they're killed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the proper name for it. Dodongo dislikes smoke. Give me money. Nah. When Atari self says. Uh, uh, I am not going to answer any blood questions. Sorry, guys. Um, that's, that's. Everything <laughs> right now is going to be System Shock related. No Kex team talk. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's. I do look after that department, but I am not in a position to start talking about that. All you need to know is that the game is coming, um, it's in good hands. It's going to be great. It's going to be a lot of fun. It won't also have any uh, compensation. Um, I'll remind for anything. Hmm. Yeah, just... I kind of feel as if I have to say this because somebody could quite well turn around and... I could have thought of the idea myself, but then somebody could say, Oh, well, I said that in that stream and you've gone ahead and used it. And I demand compensation now and... Um, you know, so we gotta kind of be careful because because this is so open. Um, like m as you know, games tend to be developed behind closed doors, and you don't really get to see into the process. But this is kind of you know, this is the opposite. And so parallel thought exists. Yeah, yeah. You, if you've thought it, somebody else has thought it probably before you. So um, I always tell myself there's no such thing as original ideas. Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, where did I get to? See a cyborg spawn from those chambers before you convert it. That might be um, something that we'd do. Um, that was something I had thought of, actually, to indicate to the player that this is something that is of actual use, because there are a lot of machines around the station you... You will look at them and you think, can I use that? Maybe, maybe not. Does that apply to me? But with that, it's actually showing some kind of interaction in the world. Something is r emerging from that, which sort of will make the player go, oh, that is something that did something there. And can I interact with that? And, you know, that's... Uh, the, the main rule is show... What's, the, what's that rule? Show, don't tell. Um, so... Um, showing much better than telling. Show denning is better than telling? <laughs> yes. Uh. <laughs> I have the same idea I want to spawn Andrews. Yeah, um... That would be... <laughs> Don't worry, third play, you'll be getting credit. Uh... Mm. Sorry, I was I got sidetracked. Um what was I up to? Uh the alt fire mode would fire a slow moving circular projectile that when making contact with an enemy will stun an enemy for a varying duration depending on um how do I word this? Depending on the 
strength of the enemy, I guess. E.g. Humanoid Mutant equals long stun time. <coughs> Cyborg Elite equals no stun time. At least for this weapon. Um... Um, I'll write that down actually. If the player continues to hold down the fire button, the display on the hood or on the gun, or both, could start flashing red, indicating that the gun is ready to fire an over overloaded shot which will cause the weapon to overheat when fired meaning that the player has to make sure that their shot is on target and has a strategy for dealing with the weapon cooldown time. That sounds about right. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm that description right there is what I'm looking to do for all of these weapons that you can see on the left, represented in green. If it's hot, if it's hot, the player drops the gun. Well, the player that that's kind of. That's realistic, yes, but it's kind of inconvenient because if you're in a very hectic firefight um, and you all of a sudden you you're not holding a gun, the player is then sat wondering where where's my gun gone? They might not think to look down and see the gun on smoking on the floor. Um, that's that's not. It's realistic, yes. It sounds like an interesting idea, yes. But at the end of the day, is it is that going to be fun for most people? And I'm thinking, no. Maybe, maybe some kind of hardcore thing again. Maybe, but my my ultimate gut feeling on that is it's not fun. It's a good idea, but not for maybe not for this. No one answered my question about compensation. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Uh, there are a lot of things coming in. Non-lethal weapon, interesting. Sorry, I'm having to scroll up again. If you gave the player a stun gun before a lethal gun, it would incentivize the player to combine the stun with the pipe. That would create an interesting hit back and forth. Oh, um, are you thinking maybe like the... So in Bioshock there was that whole thing of zap em and whack em. You hit him with the stun, the electricity that stuns him, and then you hit him with the wrench that kills him in one hit, or does a lot more damage. Uh, maybe, but I don't think our game is going to be as... Uh, it's weird to think that Bioshock is kind of more fast-paced, but it, Bioshock is a relatively fast-paced game. Um, mm, I don't know. Maybe. It could be... It could be something that if, if a, an enemy is stunned, Hitting them does do more damage, that would. You'd have to communicate that effectively, though. Th though, to be honest, the player might discover that through gameplay itself. So they might think, oh, this weapon can stun. So they'll stun it, and then they think, oh, okay, what can I do now? I've got a lead pipe. And then when they realize that they've done more damage, they might adopt that combo, and it could be a playstyle that they want to use. Um, so, you know, it's that is something to think about. Uh, round of QTE. Press X to not drop gun. That was my other idea. Explodes. Oh god. Well, batteries don't last forever. 
<laughs> Exploding my guns and throwing them. Hmm. <laughs> um. Again, yeah, it might be something we think about in regards to that whole stun thing. It's a, it's a maybe. We need to, you know, weigh it up and make sure that it's... It, it might not be something we do, it might be, I don't know. Uh, we'll give thanks where we can, um, but... Um, I mean, we're already going to have, like, the credits with all the different people who pledged and whatnot. Yeah. Honestly, the oh, awesome overheat it on purpose and throw it like a powerful grenade. Um, mm, uh, I don't think so. It's a case of, oh, well, I, I really needed that gun, but my player just decided to throw it randomly, and now I don't have a gun. That'd be kind of annoying. Will there be keyboard and mouse support on Xbox One? Uh, well, uh, maybe. <laughs> this is way too early for that question, I'm sorry. Maybe. Battery. <laughs> Ooh, that's funny. All my spark beams are note sevens. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, okay, so where do we get to? So yeah, I did actually talk about the... Um, oh, the reason I've got standard FPS... I actually didn't write that, uh, but somebody put that in there as a reference. Um, just like most shooter games have melee, pistol, shotgun, machine gun, rifle, sniper rifle, rocket launcher, BFG. It's, it's become a kind of standard thing, but System Shock was made before standard, so kind of got to think outside the box just a little bit. Um, when it comes to that stuff. Um, I wouldn't be... Yeah, I just had a thought. I wouldn't be opposed to um, having some kind of grenade launcher in respect to the fact that we have so many grenades instead of maybe throwing those grenades, like, you know, you pull the pin and chuck them. Maybe instead we have a grenade launcher that you could load grenades into um, like the concussion grenades, maybe something like that. Um, you know, it's a thought. Um, because I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there are a lot of grenade types in System Shock. Seven, I think, in total. Um, so having them as actual ammunition might be useful. Um, of course, that does mean adding another gun to the game, but um, that would mean that we wouldn't have to cut so many grenade types. Hey Daniel, different grenade launch grenade types. Yes. Cooler than the railgun. Yeah, the railgun, I thought... I thought long and hard about the railgun, and I thought, well, it's just... It's just another energy weapon in a long line of energy weapons that... You know... You get it late. You get it later on, but pretty much like one floor later, I think it is. You get the plasma rifle. What I'm thinking is, scrap the railgun, turn the laser blaster into a rifle, upgrade its power a little bit, and you've got you've got a new interesting energy weapon that isn't a stopgap between the big bulky, you know, plasma rifle. I don't want to axe the plasma rifle because god damn is that thing funny. <laughs> but, um, and I hope we can keep that same level of hilarity in our game. But, yeah, um, that's, that's my thought at the moment. Shooting auto bombs. Yeah, I saw that video. That was funny. Kickstarter. Oh my God. Keep the puns coming, guys. 
so yeah, what was I? Yeah, so talk about let's talk about the Mark III. So um, the Mark the Mark III is the only um, it's the only rifle I've left in. I you have the flechette. The flechette feels kind of eh. Um, the Scorpion is it's just an alternate version of the Mark III that doesn't have an automatic firing mode. Um, so yeah, let's write that down actually. Mark III Assault Rifle can be combined with the functionality of the RF Scorpion to create a weapon that fills both both functionalities. I forget what kind of Scorpion fires it fires the slag. It fires slag rounds. The assault rifle fires yeah, magnesium tipped and penetrator. See, again, that's another kind of uninteresting thing with the Scorpion. The Scorpion only has one ammo type. You either have the slag, which is 50 shots, or you have the large slag, which is 100. It's just a bigger clip. There's no there's no difference. It's not that interesting. Um, whereas the Mark III assault rifle, you have different ammo types. You've got the um, penetrator rounds and you've got the magnesium tipped, so they do different damage against different <coughs> opponents. Um, that feels more interesting to me. So, yeah, I, I feel right in... I feel justified by kind of combining those two weapons. It fills both functionalities. Um, the gun would have a toggle where the player can choose to fire manually. Um, What's that term I'm looking for manually? I.e. that's it. I.e. one bullet at a time per click of the mouse button. Or uh, play would have a toggle where the player can choose to fire manually or fire continuously. I.e. Hold the mouse button down to fire an entire clip. Fire an entire magazine clip out of the gun. Um, uh, what else? I think that's a about it for now. Um, the Mark III. I'm not sure if I don't know much about guns because I didn't really grow up with them. Uh, I mean, there was an air rifle at home, but um, can, can I'm, I'm sure like regular guns can overheat. That's a thing, isn't it? Um, I have no idea, but we have some gun experts on our team, so mm, that will help. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry. Will the game support superior 16 by 10? Uh, maybe? Probably. Um, I would assume so. Flechette could be a shotgun type weapon. I did actually play around with that idea. Um, <clears throat> I did think about that, but I did think, I did, I did then think, um, is that kind of falling into 
standard video game tropes. You know, I mean, every, every it, it feels as if almost every gun, uh, sorry, every game has the same gun um, format, so to speak. So you press one for your pistol, you press two for your shotgun, you press three for your machine gun, you press four for your. You know, it, it feels a bit formulaic. I think is a word. Um, do want to try and avoid that as much as I can because I don't want to I don't want to change much about the original um, the the idea of the guns themselves. Does Steven take part in blowing old EverQuest servers up? I have no idea. A typical assault rifle won't overheat in the conditions you see. Hmm. Will this game be able to run 4K 60 FPS and send the graphics to send the same image? Um, we have got some good art uh, in the works. Um, I'm not gonna. I can't. Uh, I can't really answer that question right now. Let's have a pump action shotgun left behind by a crew member. Hmm. I mean, you do get. You do get. You do get pump action shotgun riot guns. Um, they fire, you know, those beanbag things. Um, it's running on the uh, Unreal Engine. Yes. This is not, not Unity. No. It's all Unreal. Uh, have it like any recent Deus Ex game where you can assign any nut key number to item. We actually, um, I actually said to. Um, the guys, why don't we have that kind of a system in it? And we are building that kind of a system now, so um, we've effectively beaten you to it, Sir King. We've already got a system like that in place. Because um, I just like that idea of being able to customize everything to what I need rather than what the game designer tells me. So, yeah, I'm fully in support of that. <laughs> Yeah, Citadel Station, yeah, it does. It has way too many guns. Um, so, uh... Fallout New Vegas, right, gun was nuts. Yeah, I need to play New Vegas again. I think the weapons that users blow up should have recoil. Yeah, recoil will be a thing. Uh, when I don't think we're going to be... Well... It's kind of a bit early to say yet, but um, I, I imagine there will be stuff like that because the 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 hacker is not he's not some like one thing that does annoy me about every game like this guy who has never fired a gun in his life like he can just pick up a gun and he has perfect aim all the time and he never recoils at all or it's kind of like it's so kind of bog standard FPS stuff. I'd love to. One day, I'd love to see a game where um, the player has to physically explore the gun that they've picked up, so they have to... They kind of have to sit there for a while. It probably doesn't sound too exciting, does this? But they'd have to sit there holding the gun. They'd have to kind of look and go, Oh, how do I unload this thing? And they have to... They kind of have to sit there for a while and work out how the gun works, because if you just gave me a gun, I would have no idea on how to use it. So like it's not that, that hard. Well, pr probably not. <laughs> I, your, your point and shoot, I remember but... the first time I uh, shot a gun. Mm. It was pretty simple, straightforward. Mm. More complicated weapons I can understand, but a simple gun's not too difficult. Mm. But still, I wouldn't know how to load a magazine into a gun, or like guns have safety switches, and they've got you know you can dismantle a gun and take it to bits to clean it and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, just taking a gun apart, I would not know mm. how to do, but. <laughs> Yeah. Hacker ain't doing that. Mm. Just like, just at the beginning, like the player just like, okay, I reload it like that. I then have to pull this top bit back so that there's a gun actually in, uh, sorry, there's a bullet in the chamber and now I can shoot it. And like, as, as the, as the player sort of plays the game, the, the, the actual protagonist gets better at reloading and handling the weapon. So. When he picks up a gun at first, he's like really crap with it. He doesn't know how to reload it. He's constantly having to look at it to reload it. But as he maybe plays with it for about an hour, he can sort of reload it and do all the 
things like you progressively learn how to use the gun. I always wondered how a game like that would go down. Probably not very well, but that's just my imagination. <coughs> Sorry, I've missed a lot of the chat. Escape from Tarkov tries to do that, it makes you examine the parts. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Um. The hacker wasn't in the army cadets, though, that was a soldier in the second game. Yeah. And I suppose soldier in the a soldier in the future has you know more things to do. He's not just a grunt, not an infantry kind of person. <clears throat> yeah, we're very much yeah third player. It's about um, it's about laser focusing things, not running away with things. Um, Sorry guys, the chat is going so quick. I'm, I'm glad you have a lot of things to say. Uh, I I, <laughs> I do need to type because I've, I've spent nearly, I guess, 40 minutes just talking, not doing much. Uh, I probably will go for another hour at this rate, but um, yeah. Um, so, okay, let's get back to this. Um, <coughs> laser rapier. Yeah. Yeah, we can we can comment on laser rapier for a minute. So I'm just gonna put I'm just gonna put in the document now. Cutting this weapon from the game is not an option. There it is in writing. <laughs> the laser rapier will stay safe. Um, this weapon in the OG uses a very small amount of energy. Actually, does it actually use energy? I think it does use energy. It's either one of two things. It uses a very small amount of energy, or if you have energy, it works, and if you don't have energy, it doesn't work. I'm sure third player could verify that for me, but I'll just keep typing for now. It uses a very small amount of energy, but has a devastating effect on whatever comes into contact with the sharp end. Without energy, zero damage. Okay. We'll change that then. The player has to have reserved energy in order to use that weapon but it has a devastating <coughs> effect on whatever comes into contact with sharp end um, I know it doesn't have a sharp end will you, will you add new weapons and guns or just cut what's there I think you shouldn't cut anything from the original game I'm afraid we have to kind of cut things, um, but like I say, I'm trying to combine as much as I can so that we don't have to cut things. It's it's kind of, I'm trying to make the most of what we have with something, because at the end of the day, we have deadlines to meet. We can't go on forever as much as we'd like to. We can't go on forever. Um, I like how the laser sword acts in the Jedi Knight series. Um, <laughs> the hoppers are pretty terrible. Yeah. We actually have an interesting idea for the hoppers, but I don't think I can go into it right now, but uh, it could be cool if that plan comes to uh, fruition. It'll make it'll make them a lot cooler. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, something I think people will actually like. Um... The rivet gun that was um, that was pre hiatus. Um, it was a cool idea, um, but it that's pre hiatus. That I'm afraid isn't um, that's nothing anymore. 
Um, <clears throat> so I do need to think now. Do I? Do we want to have the laser rapier actually have an energy drain? Because the way I'm thinking, um, the laser rapier is stupidly overpowered in the original game. Um, it doesn't. It it can kill anything in maximum maximum uh, three hits. Um, and it doesn't. As long as you have energy, you can use it. Um, it would be interesting to see if we could change that. So not. Not having the weapon, not just holding the weapon while it's in its on state, I don't think that would cost energy, but actually using the weapon and having and having it come into contact with an enemy, that might, we might change that to have an energy cost. That would make the laser rapier, it, it would make it a weapon that you could rely on, but not something that you could just spam through the entire game, maybe. <laughs> Perhaps it can be an energy draw like the shield. Um yeah, that that, that um mm. Again, uh, this this is just a draft. I mean, we can tweak it as as we go. Um, but um, mm, thinky, thinky, thinky. Yeah. Okay. So for now, for now. I'll just put it like this. Holding the weapon and having it activated has no initial power draw on the player's energy supply. However, when the weapon comes into contact with an enemy, it would drain a small amount of power from the player's energy reserves. Um, if the player has 0% of power left, the weapon will hmm now I want to be I want to be careful here if the weapon if the player has no percent no 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 power left the one thing I don't want to do is again this this is a whole thing of communicating things effectively so if the player has no power left there's no point in them holding a fully functional weapon because if they're holding a fully functioning weapon that means that 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 gives the player feedback that they can use that weapon and it would do something if the weapon turns itself off and can't be used that gives the player information and tells them that they need to go and recharge their they they need to essentially recharge their um, energy reserves. So um, I think that sa that sounds to me like the most sensible idea. Yeah, the weapon will not activate or be equipped, or can can be equipped. Um, we could insert an animation here of 
the player trying to activate this. I'm just going to call it a sword. Sword. Only to not have it function at all. This provides feedback to the player that they need to recharge their energy reserves again. <clears throat> Yeah, that sounds... that seems right in my head. Um. Hmm. Could use it, but it'll do minimal damage. Um. <sighs> I suppose... Because, I mean, um... I suppose actually what I've written might be a bit bad because if the player doesn't have a melee weapon at all well hmm but it is it is a survival horror -y kind of game so hmm that's a, that that is one I'll have to think about having the weapon turn off completely actually yeah looking on looking back on that that might not be the best idea hmm I'll think on that uh, I'll put a note here. Think on this. And we'll move on. Um. um. Yeah, the the whole it looks like a lightsaber thing. Um, the weapon might undergo a visual redesign. It might not look quite as lightsabery because I think back then you could get away with it. Mm, maybe not so much now. I don't know. It's one. It's that. That is one heck of a minefield that I can't possibly tread. Um, so yeah. Uh, okay, lead pipe. What can be said about the lead pipe? Uh, it's a lead pipe. You bash things with it. Uh, you. Need this at the beginning. Ship it. <laughs> um, oh yeah, it's a sturdy lead pipe. Sorry, my mistake. Sturdy lead pipe. Um. Because of the removal of the dart gun we may have the player use the lead pipe for a longer duration before they get hold of a mini pistol because at the end of the day this thing has to be animated, it has to be coded we can't really sort of say, okay, you've got a lead pipe, here's three enemies, you deal with them, now here's a pistol, you'll never need the lead pipe again. Can't really do that. Um, got to make use of the things that we have. So, using the lead pipe, maybe making it a bit stronger, make, making the combat a bit heavier, um, making the combat feel good, making the lead pipe feel as if it's something that you want to use, like when you swing that thing you want to feel as if you're actually you know knocking that thing's teeth out so um, the key to making the lead pipe fun to use and something that the player might want to stick with is making that combat good so that is definitely something the guys 
definitely wanting to get right. The one, the one thing we are wanting to get right is the combat. Um, so I will make sure that that lead pipe is meaty. Um, duct tape. <laughs> Attach a flashlight to the lead pipe. God, if anybody remembers... Hands up in chat if you remember the duct tape mod. And don't Google it. If you remember the duct tape mod, show hands. You know what I mean. <laughs> uh, blocking? Well... I don't know. Blocking, I mean... <laughs> to be honest, there aren't... Uh, yes, I am referring to the Doom 3 mod. Um, blocking, I mean... There aren't, mi there aren't really that many... Mm, I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, um, when Doom 3 came out, the original one, um, you had to either hold a gun or you held your flashlight. You couldn't hold both at the same time. There was a mod that it was called the duct tape mod, and effectively, what it, the idea of it was, you duct you duct taped your flashlight to all the weapons that you used. So it made the game, you know, it kind of removed the horror a little bit, but it made the game. Mm, it was it was okay. It depended on which way you kind of thought. I didn't like it at the time because I thought the idea is to have the gun, the the flashlight out, and then hold the gun like that and be scarier that way but anyway <clears throat> um let's do the laser blaster next um yeah so I should do I should type what I mentioned in the beginning sorry I'm scratching my nose a lot it's very itchy um so turning the laser blaster into a rifle over a pistol has a few benefits. One allows us to no, not eliminate, that's the wrong word. Scale down the number of energy weapons that the player will come across because just there are too many too many energy weapons just lying around like consolidate them and make them more effective and more fun to use that's the basic idea cross two it eliminates the stop gap feeling of the Uh, one sec. Hmm. Um, yeah, that was it. Of the rail gun. <coughs> oh, hang on. Eliminate the stop get feeling of the gun. Just trying to think about this carefully. Um. Yeah, it eliminates stop with the gun by replacing the railgun with a new version of the blaster. We can consolidate. Just put that there for now. Sorry, the, I'm getting hard to track by chat. Hmm? I'm going to remind chat that we're not answering anything Kex team related slash blood related. This is purely system shock right now. Yeah. Um, sorry, guys. That's not for. That's not for this stream. Um, we appreciate that you guys are excited about it and have things to say and things to ask, but um, that part of 
Night Dive, that whole project, that's under contract. That's under secrets. We can't we can't discuss that, I'm afraid. We'd like to, but we can't. Someday um, soon. Mm, yeah. Um, when it comes closer to the time, we can, but not now, I'm afraid. Sorry. Um, I'm looking forward to playing it just as much as you guys are, though, so don't worry. Railgun was a rocket launcher. Was it? I thought it was... Um... You're making me question myself now. Um... Check out those books. I'm afraid not. I've been so busy. Um, I actually forgot about it, but I will go back and I will have a look at what you sent me and I will I will try and <coughs> take a look. Signing gave 100 bits to say the real gun <laughs> was the rocket launcher. The iron rifle was the top tier beam weapon. Right. I might have got them mixed up then. Okay. Um, yeah, get, um, hmm. Yeah, why, yeah, okay. Um, I've done, why did I write that down like that? Okay, I think I did not mean to mean the railgun. I think I meant to mean the pulse rifle. Hang on, let me undo what I have done. Oops. It was the pulse rifle I wanted to get rid of. Um, whoops! Thanks for spotting that. I probably would have picked up on that, but I suppose it helps to have a few dozen pair of eyes looking at you, so thank you. Um, yeah, <laughs> you nerds! Twitch is telling me to share. Sorry, the chat is going so happy. Uh, so the chat is going so fast. Hmm. Uh, replacing the I am pulse rifle. <coughs> um Yeah, um I'll leave it like this for now. I'll probably come back to this and have another think on it, but I do want to move on uh a little bit. Um so we can talk about something else. Um, thank you for your feedback. I, I am frantically darting between screens trying to keep up with everything. But uh, yeah, let's move on from that. So the Magpulse. Um, Magpulse, I don't want to cut. I think it's fine as its own gun. Um, as everybody might know, the Magpulse is a f I extremely effective against uh, robots. Uh, not effective at all against um, organic creatures. So, um, pretty much want to keep it that way, if I'm honest. Um, though, <coughs> ammo at the beginning. It kind of did it right with its balancing a little bit, I felt, in the original game, because you don't get much ammo from the mag pulse at the beginning. You do end up getting a lot of it later on, but really that's only because the game just... It does get a bit robot-heavy towards the end a little bit. Um. The way you come across it and it's limited ammo, it's a single... Best weapon based mechanic. Yeah. Oh, hi, Dablo. DBM. <laughs> I remembered. Um, sorry, guys. We, we're not talking about uh, blood stuff. 
Uh, not for this stream. I know I told all about the weapons in SS, but I do have manuals up now if you need me to check anything. Um, Alright, yeah, humor me. <laughs> have a look at the uh, railgun. See if it actually was a rocket launcher. And I've just been a complete idiot and misremembered this whole time. Um, so, yeah. Um, Mag Pulse is found very early on in the game. It is extremely effective against robots but does no damage at all to organic life forms. Accelerator railgun. This heavy assault weapon propels a grenade like projectile that explodes on contact. Okay. Alright, I stand corrected. 12 armor cap railgun hit clip. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, I got them the wrong way around. Never mind. <coughs> so, I'm trying to think. How can we possibly make the mag pulse more interesting to use? Um, it doesn't really. There isn't really much to the gun. Um, it fires, you know, those slow moving projectiles. They make contact, robot melt. Um. Hmm. Because it doesn't use energy, so there's no <coughs> there's no real chance of putting in any kind of overheat thing, because that's not really what it's based on. Um uh, mm. drawing a bit of a blank on that one. <coughs> I mean, because what you also have, you also have um, EMP grenades as well. I don't want to get rid of the EMP grenades. You In a game against robots, you kind of expect there to be EMP grenades lying around. Um, but I'm, I'm just wondering, because EMP grenades, they destroy robots anyway. Anyway. Um, I don't know how useful this would be, but um, maybe some kind of... So if you... There could be maybe an alternate fire mode that would do area of effect damage. Like if you get a group... If you get a group of robots together with the current way the the mag pulse works you have to make direct contact with the um oh, i'm thinking oh. yeah you have to kind of make direct contact with the target and it doesn't have any area of effect maybe an alternate fire mode could be of an area of effect thing where you could fire maybe the ground maybe the ground and it could do an area of effect thing against multiple targets, but it would cost more ammo to use. But then, what are the chances... Well, actually, I was about to say, what are the chances of you being able to group up robots to be able to effectively and satisfyingly pull that off? Um...
<laughs> yeah, I was thinking that actually DBM, like, have the... God, I don't know how easy that would be to program in, but have um, bits of the lighting sort of go out for a minute. I did think that. Hmm... Yeah, I could play with that idea. Port the game to the Frostbite engine. Um, no. It's funny though. Uh, I don't think I don't think that would go down very well. Emmanuel says it is the recommended means of deactivating malfunctioning combat robots. So maybe it could have some kind of safety protocol. Hmm. <coughs> um, I'll write that down as an idea. I'll just highlight it as a possible, possible idea. Alt fire could fire an AOE, AOE being area of effect, blast that can destroy multiple targets with a single shot, but uses double the amount of ammunition required to fire. Possible idea two. Have electronics oh my goodness it electronics that come into contact with the blast, the AOE blast malfunction for a short period of time. E.g. lights flicker, monitors go out nearby, um, etc. That kind of covers that. Um, I'll come back to that and think on that some more. Oh yeah, <clears throat> I w oh yeah. Something else I will need to go through is um, the ammo as well. We'll most likely keep. So what will uh, what I can see happening? We what I do like about System Shock Two. Um, it does color code the ammunition quite well. Um, you don't have to. You you don't. Um, how can I word this? You're not completely in the dark as to what ammunition you want to load in if you're doing it through the inventory. Um, you know just by looking, and it counts for all the ammo types, so you know that the blue ammo is the standard ammo that doesn't really have a strength or a weakness. Um, you know that the red ammo is the ammo that does more damage against the organic creatures but doesn't hurt the robots as much. And you know that the green ammo is the armor piercing rounds, which is good for the robots but not for the organics. I would want to keep something like that. Obviously you have different ammo types, but coloring them like that so that it's uniform across the board, it reads well in the mind of the player. So that would be something I would look into um, and I will suggest that when we come to doing that stuff. Um, 
so um, yeah it also it, yeah, it just helps for readability in general so um, and it doesn't really take away anything because I mean if you look at the ammo clips in the original game they're not that interesting they, they do have color on them but it's so it, it feels almost kind of randomish um, some weapons can be orange some are red some are blue it's um, it's a bit all over the place um, some are purple some have glowy lights on them um, keeping it readable is good um, keep it close oh yeah that's one thing I'm definitely gonna keep if you are close to your own EMP explosion it's gonna it's gonna screw with your own circuits because you do have that computer built built in your your noggin um, So it's why the um, the enforcers, the cyborg enforcers, they throw they throw EMP grenades, um, and it screws you up. <coughs> so we have now the mini pistol. Mini pistol. The mini pistol is actually really good. Um, if you do have a mini pistol, if you do find the mini pistol by the time you get to level 3, I found the mini pistol to be really, really effective against those invisible mutants. Because you can just sit there filling it with about 9,000 needles and it with the, from the dart pistol it doesn't do anything. Um, I just feel as if the mini pistol is a better starting weapon than the dart pistol. Um, overall. Um, this would be the first weapon, first, well, gun type weapon that the player would encounter. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what ammo does it use? Standard and Teflon, yeah. If I'm right, the, the Teflon's good against um, the robots. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of ammo lying around. <coughs> For every every gun, I. I really do struggle to think sometimes when playing through the original game. Uh, I struggle to think of a point where you are genuinely struggling for ammo. The game just throws ammunition at you. Um, for our version, it might be a bit different. Um, we'd like I'd like the player to think more about their inventory than you know normal shooters it, again kind of going towards the system shot 2 way of things um that's my first thought anyway standard issue for triptomum executives yeah, give them all a mini pistol Oh, did I get the wrong around? Is Teflon good for organics? See, again, um, it's sometimes hard to remember which ammunition is good against what because it's not. You don't. You, without looking at the manual, it's hard to suss that out. Even I have problems remembering sometimes which ammunition is good against what. Um, so, yeah, having that color-coded would be, you know, helpful. Um, there's not really much to say about the pistol. Um, there's not really much you can do to change it either. I mean, um, you could have, again, you, you could you could have an, uh, an, an alternate fire mode that fires more than one shot. I mean, it feels a bit, it feels a bit System Shot 2-like, but um, I don't know if it's really worth adding 
complexity. I don't know if it's worth adding that for the sake of just adding it, you know. I mean... Hmm... Um, what's that document on the left side? Uh, those are the weapons. The ones in green are the ones that um, we're keeping, and the red ones are the ones that are being cut. At least for this first pass, anyway. Um, um Yeah, I'll, I'll try and think of other ways to make the pistol a bit more interesting. <coughs> and then um, the Magnum would be an enhanced version of the pistol, really. It would use uses its own type of ammunition. Um. So how many pistols have we got at the moment? So we have two melee weapons. We've gone from... See one, two, three, four, five, six, six pistols. Yeah, there's there's six, six pistol light weapons in the original game to just having one, two, three. Because if we turn the laser blaster into a rifle, then we've gone from six pistols to three. Um. While also keeping the functionality of one pistol that was cut um, in the um, spark beam, so that seems ac acceptable. Um, what weapon haven't I covered yet? Yeah, let's move on. Let's let's change gears a little bit. Uh, focus on the uh, <coughs> plasma rifle. So, um, definitely don't want to cut that because it's funny and incredible to use. Um, you can definitely do it justice. Um, So, and just write the little synopsis. Uh, the plasma rifle fires a. I uh, wouldn't call it slow moving. Mm. Slow, uh, slow to medium moving projectile that when it. Oops. When it comes into contact with an enemy, um, does incredible <coughs> amount of damage. The projectile can also bounce around the area it's fired in for. I'm not sure if there's a time on the plasma rifle shot or if it's dictated by the number of times it comes into contact with the surface. I'm sure the third player can, ver can quickly verify this for me but I'm sure it's um, I'm sure it's like a, a timer. 
It also helps with the spell projectile, right? Yeah. Um, I'll just put a short amount of time for now. A short amount of time. If the projectile comes back and makes contact with the player, it can... Uh, I'm not sure if it's it, is it a one-hit kill? I think it is. <laughs> I'm not sure, I think it bounces a certain... yeah. And damage is... And damage is decreasing with every bounce. Hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, it does bounce, yeah. I'm just... I just wasn't sure if it had like, okay, it will bounce four times and then it disappears, or if it maybe, it can bounce an infinite number of times, but it maybe lasts for about five seconds, and then it kind of disappears. I'm sure that's the, st I'm sure that's the law of the weapon. I'm sure it is. Uh, it can... I will go and verify this myself, but I'm just going to write this for now. If it comes back in and makes contact with the player, it can um, usually usually result in an instant death. Um, does the plasma rifle? I'm sure it's an, it, because it's an energy-based weapon. I'm sure it has the whole. Um, power meters again and, and an overheat. Oh, it does disappear after three times. Hmm. Are we perhaps missing something with the webs? Spend more time ensuring each of the weapons had a purpose. Um Yeah, all of all of the all of the weapons did have some kind of purpose, but a lot of weapons are um the with the with the tech we have we can combine them and make things more interesting while lowering the overall amount because uh, like I, I I mentioned this at the beginning but we do have, like, we can't work on this game forever. Um, we do have time. We, we do have deadlines. Um, we want, I want to try and make things as, you know, as fun and as laser focused as possible. Um, while not removing too much. Um, I want to just try and make things a bit more unified. Just a bit more kind of sensible and readable. Like, I mean, so Dark Blue Monkey, for example, the, if, like, the stun gun, the stun gun I want to get rid of, but you can put the functionality of the stun gun into the, um, spark beam. So, you can have an alternate oh, fire mode. Sense. Yeah, you can, you can have an alt fire that stuns the player. So, you don't lose that functionality, but you keep, you, you keep, you keep the spark beam, Get rid of the stun gun, keep his functionality. I want you know, to state that it's not called cutting corners, it's called making executive decisions on what would be good for the game. Mm. Who's cutting corners? <laughs> you. Oh. Hey, Steve. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, How's Carly. It? You're so quiet. How oh. long have you been here? Mere moments. Oh, okay. <laughs> Am I... Am I still quiet? You're fine. Perfect now. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we're just going through, going through the weapons, just doing a first kind of draft. Um, um, I've almost kind of thought of everything. Well, not everything, but I've thought of a good set of ideas for most of the weapons, like. 
for example, Steve, we there's the the Mark III assault rifle and there's the RF-07 Scorpion. If we mm-hmm. so the Mark III is an automatic firing weapon, whereas the Scorpion is a manually firing weapon that doesn't really have much to it. So we can remove the Scorpion, put the functionality of the Scorpion into the Mark III, and you have the best of both worlds. You can automatic fire or you can manually fire based on what the player wants. So like, oh, so it'd be like, um, just as an example, like in uh, Counter-Strike with the submachine gun, you could have semi-automatic or full automatic Hmm. modes. Yep. I'm already on board with this whole spark um, plus stun gun combined idea. Mm. I think that's really smart. Um, so if you add modes like that to one gun or to another gun, like let's say the Scorpion or the Mark III and the uh, um, the Spark Beam, um, I guess the question is, are there other guns that can be combined so that they have multiple firing modes? Or are there guns with one mode that we could add another so that, um, you know, we can kind of have that variation on all the weapons? Um, not that yeah. we have to, but just a just a question. It's um, it's something that I would like to try and get across all of the weapons. I mean, doing something like that for the the pi- the mini pistol. Uh, I don't know. You you could have maybe some kind of alternate fire mode for that, but I don't know what would. You could you could have like like System Shot Two. Yeah, you, you have one shot and then you have three shots, which is incredibly inaccurate but um, you fire three shots in quick succession. I don't know if it's... You see, it feels a bit too much like kind of copying that game, but... Um, it's uh, it's one heck of a balancing act. Um, like... Um, I, did, I kind of thought... For this version, we take the laser blaster because the laser blaster in the original game is a pistol. If we take that, turn it into a rifle instead, we don't need um, th- we don't really need the pulse rifle anymore because um, that's just another energy weapon that's kind of in between the plasma rifle and the laser blaster. So. It kind of makes sense in my mind to just make the laser blaster a bit more powerful and not need to have the ion pulse rifle. Yeah, you also have to think too. Um, you know, I want to feel like System Shock. I- I'm guessing a producer was like, "Hey, you know, Doom's got twelve guns. We <laughs> should double it," and you know. We could put that on the box. Twice as many weapons as Doom. Because hmm. uh, then it was yeah, a selling I don't, point. Yeah, and I don't really, u- you know, like you too, I don't really use all the weapons in System Shock, and some of them are just, just seem kind of um, mm. not useless, but maybe superficial or superfluous. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the word I've been looking for this whole time. It's just, yeah. Um. But uh, you also, like, I guess from a narrative standpoint, too, you're like, well, Trioptimum does have, like, a military branch, so, like, there would be a reason why they'd have so many different weapons, but you'd think even their engineer would, uh, you know, Mm. (laughs) try to make the weapons as versatile as possible without making new weapons entirely to serve a single purpose. Mm. Because I... I'm having this thought now. Um, there, there was talking chat about um, the accelerator railgun. I got the railgun and the pulse rifle mixed up. Um, it turns out that the accelerator railgun is um, it's it's another it, again another rifle. Um, but I'm I'm thinking. So we we have the Mark III. Do we really need another? Do we need another rifle type gun when we already have one? Um, I mean, w- what I was thinking of, you could take the the idea of a railgun, and you know we have all those grenades kind of lying around. Ooh. Um, I maybe turn. Grenade launcher. Yeah, maybe turn the railgun 
into some kind of a grenade launcher instead. It, this we, we talked about this a bit earlier on. Um, so you can use all those grenades. You know, you don't have to manually throw the grenades. You have a gun that can fill that requirement. Um, yeah, I guess alt fire would probably just switch between the uh, the different grenades. Um, well, I would imagine alt fire could be something like um, I'm kind of going off the nitro pack, so you could have um, like your your primary fire would be a grenade that would explode on contact, but your alt fire could be a grenade that you could time. So you could fire mm. it, or, or or it would bounce around corners. Um, so if you know there's an enemy coming, you don't want to wait for him to run up and get you. You could fire the grenade around the corner, and it could hit him. You know, maybe they Something would turn like into like proximity sticky grenades. Yeah. Um, like that. Maybe. I'm just thinking of the demo from TF2 now. <laughs> Um. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's exactly how it'd be. Well, he was my favorite class, so <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be too disappointed by that. Because, I mean, you do, like, when there are riots in places, you do see police with grenade launchers, don't you? They fire those tear gas. Tear gas. Yeah. So a grenade launcher is, I mean, it's probably not called a grenade Grenade launcher, it's probably called something else, but it's very grenade launchery like in my opinion. I mean, I, I don't know, I'd have to go and do some more research, but, you know, I mean, turning, turning that gun into something that isn't another rifle could be just something to vary it up a bit, because we've got pistols, we've got rifles. We've got Well, others. I love the idea. Because yeah, that's like the only thing that's kind of missing from the lineup as is, is mm. good grenade launcher, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the more I talk about that idea, the more I'm actually liking it. Um, we don't have a shotgun, um, but uh, do we need a shotgun? I don't know. If, I don't know. Some don't... odd thing says include a t-shirt cannon. I think that's a pretty good <laughs> upgrade myself. Hey, a oh t-shirt my gosh. cannon killed Mod Flanders in The Simpsons. So it's don't true. underestimate the power. Total fatality is one. I just like the idea of shooting a t-shirt cannon at like mutants just to put the clothes on. <laughs> Hit dress up mode. Thanks. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> Someone yeah, better make that a mod. A yeah, t-shirt cannon mod. <laughs> like, like, uh, I'll say again, guys. This is just a first pass. Just kind of throwing ideas out out there. Um, but I like the idea of turning the railgun into something else. Uh, yeah, the cool idea about this whole list, Dan, is we've got all the proxies for all the guns in the game. So mm. if you get these, uh, you know, we get these designs out, we can at least do um, uh, some testing. Yeah. We can do some, some rapid iteration on these and just see how they feel. Mm. Um, that way we don't really have to commit to anything mm. uh, final until it feels, until it feels good. Yeah, I'm all about that. Um, I'm looking forward to building a BSP shooting range. Ooh, nice. <laughs> um, this is totally off topic. Mm. I, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm having this weird moment. It's almost existential in nature, where I remember being a kid around this time of year and getting like the Toys R Us catalog. Hmm. Oh. And uh, like going through it and like circling, like oh, this gotta have for Christmas, you know. Hmm. And yeah. uh, right now during the stream, <laughs> I've got this uh, this flyer from Bevmo, and I'm like, ooh, this whiskey will go perfect for oh. <laughs> for a night in front of the fire. Ooh, this wine, this looks great, and I'm like circling ooh, that it. That Lacroix. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. 
I like to drink my gifts. <laughs> I'll remember that. I always like looking at Toys R Us catalog too. It's just fun. I want to look at one now. <laughs> I know. You know, uh, people have scanned in the ones from like when we were kids, and those are really fun to look at. Yeah. Man. Uh, I, I like seeing. I, I used to browse those catalogs and look at all the old Mega Drive games that I, that I could never afford because they were all so expensive at the time. Um, yeah, that's fun. Apparently, contrary to popular belief, Toys R Us isn't actually dead. Um, I know, it's the, not. I was the, trying to tell people that and tell people what was happening while it was happening, and no one believed me. Yeah, um, so this this still a thing in Japan. Um, uh -huh. They're a huge thing in Japan, actually, so the brand isn't completely gone, and apparently I read the story the other day that they might actually be coming back. So it's, it's not completely over for Toys R Us. Not that I... <sighs> I can't remember the last time I bought anything from Toys R Us, so... Nee. Even when they were around, so, you know. Oh my mm. goodness, I just found a single page out of some magazine, some catalog, where the original Transformers are in here. Oh god, oh, and some British pounds! <laughs> here, I'll, I'll send it to the, uh, to the chat. Some, so I am thinking about the grenades. Some grenades I'm probably wanting to consolidate or get rid of. And I don't know how many people are going to be upset by that, but we've in the game there are like seven grenade types and um, it doesn't make... It's, it's not... I mean, if you... Okay, so if you just kind of sit the player down and say, okay... What's the difference between a gas grenade and a concussion grenade? Mm hmm. I don't know. Why are you asking me this? They sound the same. So, the, the 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 functionality could be combined into one grenade, and you know you've got you've you've kind of minus a grenade type. That's you know. Um. Ice grenade. I like this. <laughs> Transformers, heroic Autobot. Oh, I'm sorry. Evil Decepticon jet plane. And then it says color may vary. And it's like, yeah, of course it does, because there's three different characters there. <laughs> Come on, get with it. Catalog from 1984. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that kid's shorts. I'm totally derailing this stream. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, okay. Well, we're talking. a couple of minutes away from that two-hour mark. Oh, geez, just wow. FYI. I've been sat here talking about this for an hour and a half, almost. It, oh, my throat feels awful. Yeah, um... No, I, I'd want to keep the frag grenades. Frag grenades are frag grenades. Um, EMPs... Frag grenades, EMPs, those two will definitely stay. Um... Earthshakers... Yeah, because uh, yeah, you, you've got Earthshakers that could be like extremely powerful grenades like you better not be around anyway when this thing goes off um, maybe um, landmines <sighs> I don't know about landmines if, if you can honestly <sighs> they, we could make them more useful because I mean so in System Shock in the original game enemies didn't really patrol did they um, they, even if they saw you, they would kind of very slowly meander towards you. And if you weren't there by the time they got to the place they wanted to be, they'd just kind of stand there. Um, the only time when they really patrol is when you're on zero combat difficulty. And that's when you can actually see them patrolling around. Because we actually have patrol rounds, like the enemies they can navigate the corridors and they can walk around and go through doors and all this. Landmines would actually... they would actually have more of a purpose um, in this version. Um, obviously that isn't something you can fire out of a grenade launcher, but um, by taking the by taking the grenades 
um, and having them only be loaded into a gun and have you know separate th separate things like landmines I mean landmines is possibly something we could keep um, nitro packs though I'm not I'm not sure I mean a nitro pack is just a grenade that can be timed but um, to be honest I can't honestly remember the last time I used a nitro pack. They are. They, they seem to be rather pointless. Um, so nitro packs could quite easily disappear, and I don't think anybody would be too sad. Um, hmm. So much stuff to think about. You use them when you ran out of other things. I'm just looking at toy catalogs from 1984. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm listening to you, though. I'm, di I'm digesting that information. Okay, it's all good. No nitro packs. I mean, yeah, nitro packs, nit nitro packs are on the chopping block for me. Just no. Hmm. Thinky, thinky, thinky. Oh yeah, I was typing up there. I got sidetracked. I was thinking about the railgun. So yeah, for the railgun, we can turn this weapon into some kind of grenade launcher. This would allow us to make use of the many grenade, grenade types located around the station. Um, primary fire would fire a grenade that explodes on contact, either with an enemy or the environment. Alternate alternative fire would launch a grenade that would be able to bounce around corners allowing the player to adopt more than one strategy yeah that's okay um yeah that seems fine Wish I could make the railgun shoot live grenades. Live mines. Oh, yeah. Are you going to remove flechettes? Um. Yeah, maybe. Uh, the flechette gun. It's an it's an automatic gun. Um. <laughs> The flechette's more like a uh, submachine gun, really. Um. I suppose. Um. Could be something to think about, but maybe having a submachine gun might be okay. Um. I mean, I, I'm kind of looking at the list and I'm thinking, yeah, the mini pistol's there, but a mag, but having a magnum, isn't that just um, isn't that just a more powerful pistol? 
Um, That's what I would understand. Yeah, I mean, Anyways. if you... The... I should be better at wording my thought process than this. Um, but, yeah, just having two pistols, having two, yeah, having two pistols that are kind of similar? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it would make sense to bring the flechette back, actually. Have a pistol, have a submachine gun type thing that could use the same rounds as the pistol. Um, and then you get your assault rifle. Um... Does that sound better to you, Steve? He's not listening. Yeah, no, I... Oh. <laughs> I'm just, like, trying to think, like, I'm probably going to defer to you, because, um... Mm. I haven't played the game that far through recently oh. enough to remember, because once I found a weapon I liked, I pretty much just stuck with it. Mm. Um, and there was only a couple that I really uh use throughout the whole game but um mm. you know that's that's what we kind of want to fix here we want to we want to take away the bloat and make each weapon that we do keep in a little more um usable for play styles and that type of thing yeah because the the way si so the way system shot work is um you don't your ammo is not a physical thing that you carry around in the sense of you have your inventory yes you have a certain amount of slots, but you can carry as much ammo as you want. In our version, it's going to be a case where you are going to have to physically carry that ammunition around. And if the player is overloaded with so many different types of ammunition, the player won't have room for anything that they might want to pick up around the world. Or so, they'll just have to sacrifice, right, and move some stuff around. It'll be mm. like System Shock 2, but if, more so. But if you have so much ammo, it just becomes like this nightmare scenario of, okay, which ammo goes in what gun, what gun am I safe to drop, and what... And it, it just... The way System Shock 2 solves the problem is... Uh, so the ammo for the pistol and the assault rifle is the same ammunition, so that ammo is never useless. Mm -hmm. um, which, when you think about it, is rather clever. Um, the shotgun, there's only one shotgun, so you just kind of carry that around. The shotgun's always useful. Um, the energy weapons have their, you know, charge, so they don't need ammunition. Um, so the player only has to worry about... Um, at most, I think maybe six or seven different types of ammo, and those are only the different ammo types. So you've got the standard rounds, the anti-personnel rounds, and the armor-piercing rounds, but they all work in the same weapon. So yeah, um, I think it, that's what we should probably try to do. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. My my thought process is going towards that because it's just it's a very it it maximizes the amount that you can do and it just doesn't confuse the player and it's it's just mm -hmm. simple and it's also because it's based on the color of the wep of the ammo they they stay similar across all the weapons so mm -hmm. the blue rounds for the pistol and the blue rounds for the shotgun do the same thing the red rounds for the pistol and the red rounds for the shotgun are both anti-personnel rounds so you know just by looking at the color what ammo to load in what gun without having to really kind of yeah. stop and do the whole micro managing kind of oh what is this this is a different color to this but this is not like that and it's surprisingly simple and because of its simplicity it's just clever overall i, I like it the the that was probably one of the most rewarding parts i think about system shock 2 was mm. um like you would get into a battle and this is what the game didn't do very well it didn't mix enemy types that well so like you didn't really fight the um the shotgun mutants along with again and there weren't like robots in there at the same time mm. and so um like switching ammo types like mid battle doesn't really happen that much but when you get somewhere and you're facing off against let's say 
you know, a turret or something like that. You can kill it with the regular rounds, mm. um, but it takes a whole lot less bullets if you switch to armor piercing. Yeah. And so it just, that one extra little detail just added so much to me because it's like, okay, what you, your mind is forced to think, what am I fighting based on my experience with the weapons that I have, what is going to be the fastest, most efficient way to take this down because ammo is limited and I need to make every shot count kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. So, um, uh, I think that sharing the ammo types across the ballistic weapons, or the ballistic type weapons is going to be the best. Mm. Um, we, but what we might be able to do is introduce one new type of ammo that's, um, you know, explicitly used against some of the higher level enemy types or something. Like, we'll have a regular round, we'll have an armor piercing round, and we could have like an EMP round or something like that. Hmm. Or, I don't know. That's, you know, just to add to the complexity of the of the combat just a little bit, since we'll be essentially taking, let's see, there's darts, Teflon, slug rounds, splinter rounds, penetrator rounds, large slag rounds, fragmentation damage rounds, mm. uh, hornet rounds, like all this crazy stuff. Yeah. We could, we could, we could kind of condense that. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can, yeah, we can do that. Um, and because the, because a lot of, not, not a lot, but because some weapons are getting cut, um, just allows us to focus that bit more, so. Um, I'm about ready to call it because we've gone 10 minutes over. Um, yeah. It so, didn't end up being a short stream after all. Yeah. Um, Full length feature film. Yeah, I just kind of got enveloped in it, so I just thought, oh, I'll just keep going. Um, so, yeah, guys, if you've got any questions or anything, we've got two minutes um, for that, so. Well, if we're wrapping it up, then I can share the Kickstarter update with everyone. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, um, make sure that you guys check out the Kickstarter update um, when you can. There's so much, so many cool screenshots uh, that we're showing off this month. So many awesome concepts. Um, Dan, maybe uh, Carly, if you if you put that out, maybe at the for the end of the stream, Dan can just kind of uh, scroll through it and we can all look at it together. Oh, I just posted it and linked it in the chat. Cool. All right, I'll. One sec. I'm gonna say, um, <laughs> there's a guy on YouTube that keeps giving me a hard time for some reason. Um, but he's <laughs> the last thing that he said is like, "How come there hasn't been any updates or any word on this project since you finished it?" And I was like, "What? We, we do an update it like every month. Every hmm. month." We, and we do dev streams, and we're constantly talking and uh, interacting with the community on Discord. I'm like, where have you been? He's, and like a month later, he replies. He's like, Yeah, well, you missed one update in March, 2017. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that may be the case. I can't. I can't defend it. <laughs> uh, looking at a December update now. Those cool screenshots. Lots of cool stuff. Oh my god, Pipe World looks amazing. Mm. Um, and that's a first pass on lighting, but it's already, it looks really, really great. And um, it's going to look even better when the decals start going in. And um, the effects, like sparking lights and wires. And it's just great. Mm. It's, I'm so happy with how this turned out so far. Yeah, uh, Grog Loopy, there is a link at the bottom of the Kickstarter to join our Discord. You can see, um, 
how the tiles work. We literally have a randomizer button. You press it, it cycles through the tiles randomly. I'm excited the closer and closer we get to GDC so we can keep showing more and more cool stuff. Hmm. Yeah, um, I feel like um, the that alpha, Adventure Alpha update little trailer that we released, um, it confused a lot of people and I should have should have known ahead of time. Um, but like a lot of the comments are like, wow, this, you know, I, we, we were happier that you're going back to the old design, but we weren't wanting like the original textures in there. And um, it's been hard to convey that those are just temporary. This is what the game actually looks like. And this Kickstarter update in particular, hopefully will alleviate some of those concerns. But uh, hmm. yeah, I'm like, I'm very, very happy so far uh, with how it's coming along. Yeah, uh, awesome face. We're, we're going to be doing more dev streams of in-engine stuff. It's been a unusually hectic month with trying to um, just get the pipelines figured out and and really get full on into production. Yep. Um. The amount of in-engine stuff from me has slowed down because, well, the BSP is all done. Um, so, yeah, it's trying to find uh, other streams to do for you guys. Cool new force, for, force bridges. We've reached number 50. Oh, it's our 50th update. Mm. Dang, I didn't even realize that. This, I love this, uh, the science lab test pod concept is so cool. Yeah. And we have some screenshots oh, yeah. of blood here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And if you guys don't know about Dusk, go check don't go check Dusk out. It's a great little retro shooter. Um, harkens back to the Quake era, so yeah, it's always fun. All right, gonna call it there. So thanks, guys. It's been fun. Um, see you next week when we pl be playing uh, Dishonored uh, again for a while, just kind of taking it easy. And uh, yeah. So, until then, Don't take care of each other. Don't forget to come tomorrow with Tom streaming. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's going to be... bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> that's going to be a thing. What's he doing? He might be doing more gaming. I'll have to double check with him. Should... Yeah, all right. Yeah, we'll see if... I'm not uh, sure he's... if he'll be doing art or gaming. I have to double check. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be cool if he could do an art stream, because it has been a while since we've done one of those. Yep. If you guys want to check out the schedule, it's at twitch.tv forward slash nightdive studios. Um, Where you at? Down yep. below. <laughs> yep. Got the whole schedule out there. And, uh, yeah. So, thanks guys ever so much for hanging out and shooting some ideas across. We've, <laughs> we've deliberated and thought on things and, yeah, it's gone well today, actually. So, uh, that's always good. So... Until next time, take care, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah, and stay hydrated. <laughs> <laughs>